Gary Kelly is the CEO of Southwest Airlines. Under his leadership, Southwest enjoys some of the best passenger ratings in the business. It can also boast a record few other companies, let alone another airline, can. It's been profitable for 47 straight years through 2019. And another point of pride for Kelly, Southwest has never laid off a single employee in its 50-year history, even during COVID. With that kind of track record, what's not to LUV love? Hello again, I'm Adam Shapiro and Gary Kelly, the CEO of Southwest Airlines joins us now live. And Gary, it's always good to talk with you. Hey, great to be with you, Adam. Thanks for having us. The purpose of what we're doing today is the path forward. And in about four months, your path forward is going to be transitioning out of the role as CEO into executive chairman. A lot of us are curious, what's going through your mind right now? Well, right now, I think we're really focused, uh, you know, on the moment here and um, dealing with the pandemic still and working very hard to uh, get back to profitability. Um, we're very excited about our plans for 2022. And, you know, next year uh, will be 18 years for me as CEO. And I think a very good time to transition in the sense that Southwest is so well prepared uh, financially. Uh, our people are superb. And, you know, as the intro said, you know, we, we ha we've enjoyed uh, fantastic uh, customer service rankings uh, for years and a 47 year streak of profitability. So it's a good time to transition in that sense. And uh, I'm going to remain executive chairman and uh, be part of that path forward, I hope, for many, many years. Sometimes when you look at the path forward, where we've all been impacts where we're going. So let's take a look back because the Southwest Airlines, most of us know, is roughly 50, 50 plus years old, even though the airline has its origins back in 1967. And I want to read something I found from an article in 2018. And they said, the main reason Southwest makes so much money is because people love working there. Unlike much of corporate America, it realizes happy employees will make you money. You have always said that your greatest uh, achievement has been no layoffs. You even just mentioned that. The airline's never been bankrupt. The other carriers have. How important is that relationship for the airline with its employees? Because even today, there are occasionally those hiccups. Well, it's, it's the most important thing. Uh, it always has been, and it, and it always will be at Southwest Airlines. The culture is very, very strong. But you just think about what it takes to uh, create a, a, a business, uh, a good business, a, a bad business. It, it takes so many different inputs. And in our particular case as an airline, it's very capital intensive uh, with all the aircraft that we invest in. Uh, it's very energy intensive. As a transportation company, uh, we buy a lot of jet fuel. Uh, it's heavily regulated, uh, very much uh, subject to economic cycles. And it's very uh, people intensive, very labor intensive. So all those things have to be managed well to be successful. Uh, but ultimately it's people who do all of those things. Uh, and so it, you very quickly realize uh, it takes a lot of people. It takes a lot of teamwork. Um, it's a customer service uh, business as well. Our customers are experiencing our product as we're making it. And one of the huge advantages that we've had competitively over 50 years uh, is our customer service, which means our people. Uh, and I didn't invent it. You know, Herb Kelleher said, our people come first, they'll take care of our customers, uh, and then everything else uh, takes care of itself in terms of other stakeholders, especially shareholders. And um, I think what that translates to is when you get up to bat and times are really tough, do you really put your money you know, where your mouth is. And through 9-11, through wars, through fuel price spikes, uh, through the Great Recession, and now uh, the pandemic, we've never had a layoff. We've never had a, a furlough. We've never had a pay cut. And yes, I'm very, very proud of that. Um, the 47 years of profitability well, you, obviously goes hand in hand with sure. that. And you, you, can't, you can't accomplish that unless you're successful as a business also but the two do go uh, hand in hand. 
Well, many, many of today's CEOs studied Southwest's brand, Southwest business model when they were in business school. And if you go to the investor page, you can read the Southwest promise. And the company's promise includes that employees will be provided the same concern, respect, and caring attitude within the organization that they're expected to share externally with every Southwest customer. And I was reading that when you interview prospective um, employees, and you're, you're hiring 5,000 by the end of the year, that you look for within those discussions empathy and you set up a process where there's a group interview. Is that still part of the culture and can other companies look at that as a way to improve? Oh, sure. And But again, I think it starts with uh, purpose. Uh, it starts with uh, values. And, uh, and, and again, you, you have to prove to your employees that you love them. You have to do more than just tell them. You have to prove over a long period of time. But yeah, we look for people that have a great attitude, the people that want to serve, people that want to be part of a championship team. And uh, ultimately, we, we think of Southwest as a family. Uh, and one of my favorite phrases is, uh, as our family, we want to treat our customers, uh, each of them, like their guests in our home. And it just translates into so many acts, acts of kindness, uh, acts of service uh, by our people. Uh, it's and, that, and that's what makes Southwest special. That's what makes our customers raving fans of Southwest Airlines. But uh, but because want, it's part of a want, larger community, absolutely we sure. we 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 still have those kinds of uh, vetting processes, uh, looking at new candidates, just to make sure they're a good fit for the Southwest culture. I want to talk about the Southwest brand and that relationship with the customers. One last thing looking back, because it is part of going forward. How did Southwest go from an airline with an ad in, I think it's the early 70s, hostesses and hot pants, to being named this year a best employer for women by Forbes? You know, I just think you have to continue to grow. You have to continue to evolve and uh, then continue to strive to live up to your values. Uh, and if we want to be an inclusive environment, um, you know, in, the, in those days that you're describing, Adam, uh, all of our flight attendants were women. And so uh, obviously that changed and changed very quickly. But, uh, you know, it was, it, it, in the times, it was fun. Uh, there was definitely a, a play on the, on the love word that was used over and over and over. Drinks were love potions on board the airplane. It was great fun. And it, it, it established a certain light, uh, good humored um, personality. And uh, we just need to make sure that as, as times change and as sensitivities change, that we change along with it. And, and that balance between a, a brand that people do love, um, there, there are advertising executives who talk about the relationship between a consumer and a company, when they quote, love the company, they'll forgive the mistakes. And of course, we've talked about last week during earnings, the problems that happened uh, that were beyond the airline's control with weather impacting Florida. And yet you have this linear uh, route system. As you go forward, would Southwest ever con consider changing that kind of business model so as to one, keep your consumers happy when there are hiccups in the system, or is it still going to be what we've seen in the past, the, I, the, the linear routing as opposed to this hub and spoke? Uh, it'll, it'll still be linear. And again, they're, you know, over the course of time, they're going to be one-off events. Uh, and that was more than weather. Weather compounded the problem, but that was really uh, staffing shortages within the Air Traffic Control Center in, in Jacksonville, Florida, is what the FAA has said. And it impacted us significantly because we had Oh, close to 200 airplanes that by Friday evening were out of position with 66 different locations that we needed to get them and our flight crews to. And, you know, in my history at Southwest, I don't remember an event like that uh, that created such problems. Um, so we, we do have opportunities, though, to rebuild our route network, which has been dismantled to a degree uh, in this pandemic, just to try to survive the collapse in demand. So we've got uh, a theory that we call backbone, 
which is uh, a, a real dense set of frequencies be between important city centers in our route map. And uh, we'll build those back, uh, and it will definitely create better resilience for us to recover uh, in the future. So it's a very tried and true system. Obviously, it served us well. We're, uh, you know, no one comes close to the, the success that Southwest has had in the airline industry. So uh, every reason to believe that we can uh, continue to be very successful with this point-to-point -point system going forward. As we look at the industry going forward, uh, you have served as chairman of the board of directors of Airlines for America. What does the industry face next year and the year after as it recovers from the pandemic? Are there hurdles in the way that we're not paying attention to now, but that are coming at us? Well, I think if you just think about broader industry issues, uh, traffic demand obviously collapsed in 2020. It has recovered nicely. Uh, in some ways, in, in other ways, not so much. Uh, two broad groups of travelers, business travelers and leisure travelers. Leisure travel is very strong uh, and business travel is still uh, quite weak. So I think the industry will be looking very carefully uh, at that recovery uh, over the next one to five to who knows how many uh, years. Uh, things have changed uh, a lot, uh, as we all know, uh, in this uh, uh, pandemic environment. But I think even longer term than that, and, and, and for the trade association in particular, what we're all really focused on is climate change uh, with um, net zero carbon emission goals uh, no later than 2050 uh, as an industry. So uh, a lot of long range uh, challenges that we'll need to make steady progress on uh, and uh, see a lot of innovation, uh, quite frankly. And then just the immediate task of getting past this pandemic uh, will continue to be uh, another focus here for the near term. Um, try not to blush as I go through some of your accomplishments, but over the last 35 years that you've been with the airline and the last 18 roughly that you've been CEO, you had the launch of international destinations outside of North America to the Caribbean. You had the introduction of the new frequent flyer program and also initiation of service recently to Hawaii. Where does Southwest grow in 2022 when there's a new CEO at the helm? Well, Bob Jordan has been my partner for 33 of my 35 years. And um, he's, as you might guess, uh, after 33 years, he's very, very well prepared. Uh, and he is um, an active participant uh, over the last 33 years in getting Southwest to this point and, and a, uh, a co-architect, if you will, of the strategy going forward. Uh, it, it, and clearly, uh, he's a different person and he'll have different challenges and have, have to make uh, different choices, what to keep, what to change. Uh, but, um, you know, Southwest still has, uh, amazingly, after 50 years, and after having become the largest airline in America, uh, gosh, around 2004, when I first started as, as CEO, we still have enormous opportunities to grow with the Boeing 737, uh, which is a great, very versatile narrow body airplane, uh, all in North America. Uh, and I think we have a number of years of growth uh, uh, available to us. So uh, I like our product. Um, I like the customer service uh, experience that we offer. Uh, I like our low fare brand and the fact that we don't nickel and dime our customers. Uh, and again, I think Bob embraces all those things too. So we're in, a, we're in a great position. We have a strong balance sheet, still investment grade, even after the pandemic. Uh, we have a great uh, order book with uh, the Boeing company for the 737-8 and dash seven, uh, which uh, I hope will be certified next year and uh, more than ample opportunities to uh, grow. We need to restore our route network uh, backbone that I referred to earlier, uh, that close to what it was pre-COVID, in addition to continuing to expand our route network in North America. I mean, pre-COVID, you had more than 4,000 flights. As we wrap up, what advice do you have for other CEOs? And you brought up Mr. Kelleher. Um, there's that story about the malice in Dallas years ago. Uh, I think the tagline United was, uh, United, excuse me, Southwest was using 
was just plain sense. And there was another aviation company that had a similar tagline, they sued, and they resolved this issue over an arm wrestling match that Herb lost, paid $5,000 to a charity, and then was allowed to use the, um, the slogan. That kind of humility, you don't see that in a lot of CEOs. What advice do you have for corporate America about that lesson? Well, it, it was yeah, it was just plain smart, and it was a uh, uh, you know a, a tongue-in-cheek trademark dispute. Um, and great fun. It obviously you know continues to attract attention. Uh, almost thirty years later, I guess twenty-nine years later. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's uh, you know what would you what would you hope out of a company that it's passionate about what it does, that it's really good at it, that it makes money. Uh, to uh, paraphrase Jim Collins. Um, and then, you know, when we look at our, our people, we ask them to work hard and treat everybody with respect. But, uh, you know, don't take yourself too seriously. Um, we we want to strive to be the best, uh, and that's a never-ending pursuit. But um, it just pays to be humble because, you know, sometimes things don't go perfectly. Uh, but I think... Uh, the word love, uh, humor, uh, family, those are all important for us. Uh, and it all leads up to uh, a strong desire to take great care of our people and then in turn our customers. That's why we've never had a layoff. That's why we've never had a furlough because we care about our people. They're part of our family. So all that I think is uh, critically important to our success. And I think it works for any company to uh, just to care, and especially about uh, your employees. Gary Kelly is the CEO at Southwest Airlines. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having us, Adam.